Good morning. I had to put my hair up. It's like so tangled this morning. I must have slept. Oh, I know why. Because I put it in a ponytail last night when I went to sleep. Good morning. <laughs> I'm roll tide. Yeah, they're not doing so great this year. That Texas game was rough. Good morning, you guys. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I see one of my mods on. That's a good sign. <clears throat> I don't know what's happening with this hair. I gotta wash it this morning. <clears throat> it's so dirty. Good morning, Yvonne. Yeah, rolls out even in the rough years. My students were making fun of me yesterday because I um, support Alabama. And I was like, listen here. I paid good money to support Alabama. I got my master's from there. <laughs> I'm not a bandwagon. <laughs> I paid a lot of money to be an Alabama fan. <laughs> oh, we can all. I actually have, um, I'm one class away from having a, a master's certificate at um, Mississippi State. She's okay, um, Courtney. She left smiling yesterday, so that was a good sign. I went and um, when I when I had messaged y'all, I went and made her a gift basket with like a note that, you know, like how you'll take the candy and you'll make like a like a cute little saying out of the candy. And so she liked um, Mountain Dew and Lunchables, turkey and, and American cheese Lunchables, and chocolate and so I like piled it on in in a, this big basket and I um I gave it to her and I said um God is able like lunchable uh to do to do um I don't I can't remember anyway I oh God is able I put sour patch kids in there I was like God is able to turn our sour patches sweet um because he can do all things. And then I put a bunch of chocolate in there and put, and chocolate always helps. And I took it to her in her last class and she was, she was smiling, um, when she left, which is good because she cried all day yesterday. So just keep praying for her. She is going through a rough time right now and her husband's deployed. So that doesn't make it any easier. You know, he's in the army. And so, I think she just felt really alone yesterday. Um, so, I can't talk about it or I'll start crying because it was y'all that made that happen. So, anyways, it was a blessing. It was a blessing to not even have to think twice about going and getting that for her. Like, literally, I didn't even have to think about it. I didn't have to ask people to donate towards it or add money to it. Like, immediately, God put it on my heart. It was like, you need to go get her something to cheer her up. And it was like, immediately, I was able to go do that. And I was like, yes. Uh -uh. So... Yes, that's kingdom work. Yes, yes, yes. It is kingdom work. And today is actually one of the days we're going to read in 1 John. By the way, the question that I get asked, probably the two questions, and I'm working, I'm going to work on both a YouTube video and a series for these two questions, but the two questions that I get asked, probably more than anything, the first one is, how do I hear from God? Like, how do I actually know it's his voice? And the second question is, where do I start reading in the Bible? And uh, people have different opinions about this, but, and a lot of people will say the gospels, but my, um, my personal place where I always send people to, and I know that John is talking to believers, but I always send people to first John because, it just, I don't know, it's a short book. It's easy to feel like you've accomplished something when you've read it. Um, and and you don't feel like so like bogged down in it. But I always say first John because it talks about 
who God is, like what he is and what the difference he makes in us. And so the two, the two places I always send people when they say, where should I start in the Bible? I always say, start in first John and then go to the book of Mark because Mark is such, and I actually started reading Mark to my little boy last night. Um, instead of reading books at night, we read scripture. And so we'll get in bed this is something I started doing like maybe like a week or so ago. So instead of reading a book, I do have a children's Bible, but most of the time I'm just like studying my Bible anyway when he goes to sleep. And so I'll just read like whatever I'm reading, I'll just read to him. <clears throat> and he's gotten where he'll ask for it. He'll say, Mama, can you read the Bible to me till I fall asleep? And, um, so anyway, like I'll just open, I just opened the book of Mark and I was like, why don't we just read through the book of Mark, you know, through that. So anyway, um, so I always say first John and then my favorite of the four gospels is Mark. I know a lot of people feel differently about that, but Mark is just, he's just, it's just straightforward. Like how, how he gives the word is just to the point. It is what it is. There's no fluff. This is what it is. It's very like methodical in the way that he puts it out. And it's just like, this is the point. This is what Jesus did. This is what happens. This is what I said, period. And I love that. Like, it's just, it is what it is, you know? And so I always lead people to those two first. And then because like when you're getting in John chapter two, which is what we're going to be in this morning, verses 26 and 27. <clears throat> but when you're in John like chapter two and you start reading about um, the false gospel and then what abides in you from the beginning, you'll know when you read Mark what John is talking about. So you'll pick up on, OK, well, that's what John was talking about. Like that's the true teaching, not this. Anyway, so that's what I always tell people. Um, <clears throat> remember to share the scriptures you pray over him. Um, so anyway, that's what I think is, is, um, that's what I do. That's what I do. So that's what I suggest to everybody. And then as far as, um, how you hear from God, y'all know how, how I pray and ask God to lead me in that. Um, first of all, you got to read scripture. You got to know his voice. You got to know his character. You got to know the truth about who he is. Because if you don't know the truth about who he is, how are you going to, how are you going to know if that's him that's speaking to you? How are you going to know that's, that it's him that's calling you? Um, and then two, you've got to, um, and God can speak to people without scripture. Obviously we see that in scripture, but the fact of the matter is that he gave us an entire book to learn about him and to know about him. And so there has to be effort on our part to learn more about God. Like we have to put in effort to do that because he's like, I gave it to you. It's right here. Like you have every resource that you need. You have the internet, you have things that in the old Testament they didn't have and you have Jesus and you have the Holy spirit. And so anyway, you have to seek out to know the character of God so that you can understand when he calls you to do something that it's his voice that's calling you to do it because it aligns with his truth. And um, <clears throat> then you just ask him, like you just ask him, God, what do you want me to say? And what, how do you want me to respond? And if you've been on here, you know that I, I, I'm very, a very strong believer in that because that's how I got here. Um, you always block me. No questions. Welcome. I block, have blocked very few people in my um day. So, no, uh, and for my mods, I don't mind if people ask questions, even if the question seems a little direct or not quite nicely worded. I don't care if people ask questions, but, you know, like disrespecting God or um, me as a mom, that's a common one. People like to disrespect me as a mom. We're just not going to, we're not going to entertain that. But questions are fine. Um, also, uh, I, you guys, I have kind of stopped looking at the comments. Um I just feel in this season, as God grows this platform, that that's the wisest decision for me, um, because it, it really just, like, it really bogs down my mind if I get distracted, and so if you ask me a question and I don't respond to it, just know that I don't look at the comments most of the time. Um, I just... I just truck on with what scripture says and then we end and then everything is great and good and you can message me outside of this platform and we'll we'll do it we'll do the thing we'll talk about it okay all right I did read that one Susie I guess show me where sorry you popped up this morning on TikTok well good I'm glad that you're here 
Um, okay, so we're going to talk about, before we pray, we're going to talk about First John chapter 2, verses 26 and 27. And if you read those ahead of time, you're probably like, hmm, why are we even here? And why is she even teaching us? Because it seems very odd what John is saying in light of the fact that we're actually talking about this in a teachable moment. And so anyway, it's it's pretty cool. Um, we're going to learn some things about scripture and um, we're going to learn how important context is in light of scripture. But before we do that, let's pray. God, I pray and I ask, first of all, that you would anoint this time, God. We know that you don't do anything by coincidence or mistake, that every appointment is a divine appointment to you, God. That means every person who scrolls past this live or who clicks on even for a moment gets to experience who you are. And we believe that and we claim it, God, because you say that is truth. You say that you won't let anybody at the end be without an excuse, God. And so I pray that you would honor our time here today, that you would show up and speak in spite of me and my sin, that you would anoint us with your word and your power, that you would um, pour out your spirit to us, God, and you would make your words known to us because we have turned and looked for you. Proverbs 1 verse 23, God, we we ask for that. We, we claim that promise over our lives today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys. <clears throat> All right, First John chapter 2, verses 26 and 27. And we will talk about context and what we've talked about earlier. But for this morning, um, before well, I want to read this before we talk about that. You know, usually I give y'all a backstory just to catch people up who haven't been here. And then we talk about the verses. But we're going to go straight into it and we'll go over the context in a minute. <clears throat> Verse 26 and 27, I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. That's an important verse, okay? That's an important verse to take into the next verse. I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. But the anointing that you received from him abides in you, and you have no need that anyone should teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about everything, <clears throat> but at as his anointing teaches you about everything, and is true, and is no lie, just as it has taught you, abide in him. Okay, so, seems kind of weird, huh? Like, it says in verse 27, you have no need that anyone should teach you. And when I read that, I was like, that sounds strange. Like, why would God put that in there? Because we know that teaching and and being a teacher is actually a spiritual gift. Like, that's a gift that God gives us. So, why would John put, you have no need that anyone should teach you? And I think that it's very interesting. God makes no mistakes and there are no coincidences. But I think that it's very interesting how we landed on this verse at this season in this community because we have started the patreon you know different things like that and there have been struggles with that there have been um people that don't agree with that and and i would say like one of the things um and i have to surrender that every day my my people that are that talk to me every single day they know that that's something that i've surrendered to i have to surrender to every single day because my flesh doesn't want to do that and so um yesterday i was talking to my husband and y'all know that he's a big call of duty gamer like he loves call of duty that's his thing. And so he he was watching on YouTube when I got home yesterday or when he got home yesterday, Parker the Slayer, which is a, a big, big, big like YouTuber, Twitch account guy that does Call of Duty. And I'm going to relate this back to the gospel, but y'all just bear with me for a second. Call of Duty is very different. But, um, and I was like interested because he uses a filter on his face. And so I was like, why does he do that? You know, like, that's so weird. And the reason Dustin watches him is because he doesn't cuss. He doesn't use profanity. Like, he's very clean. And he just talks about the game. And so, anyway, I, I like, started looking him up on YouTube. And I was like, he really doesn't show his face. That's so interesting. It's always got this filter on it. And Dustin said, um, yeah. He was like, I don't know that anybody really knows what he looks like. So, I started looking. Because, you know, as women, we're very, like... We're CIA agents, basically. We work for the FBI that people just don't know it. But 
anyway, um, I started investigating and I found this picture. Um, and I was like, oh my goodness, that doesn't look anything like, anyway, like roundabout, like I found this picture and Dustin was like, well, you don't really know if that's really what he looks like. That could be fake. And I said, you're right. But it looked like his setup and stuff. So anyway, um, so I found this, this picture and I didn't even show it to Dustin because I didn't want to ruin it for him because he doesn't look anything like his, his like whatever filter thing. But when I was looking for that picture, what I found is that this guy who streams Call of Duty has a 1 million net worth. He, and this was like 250,000 YouTube followers ago. It was like when he had half a million YouTube followers. His net worth was listed as a hundred, as, as 1 million, not 100 million, 1 million dollars. And I was like, that is insane. First of all, I looked at my husband and I said, what are you doing? First of all, you know, like. You play this all the time. <laughs> and we laughed about it. And then the second thing I said was, how how in the world is that even possible playing a video game? You know? And Dustin said, because he live streams and people give him gifts. And I was like, what? You know, as somebody that does social media, I was like, that doesn't even make sense. You know, um, y'all send me, y'all will randomly send me gifts on here, but I think the most that I've ever gotten from a live, if y'all wonder how much TikTokers make is a dollar. So, <laughs> which I'm grateful for, but you know, like it's, it's funny. And I was like, I told Dustin, I was like, that blows my mind. Like people really send him upwards of $1 million to play Call of Duty. And he was like, oh yeah, all the time. He was like, he'll be playing and this random person will send him $100 just because he's live streaming. And I told Dustin, I said, that is crazy. I said, first of all, you better not be doing that. We don't have an extra $100. I said, second of all, like why? And he said, because people don't want him to stop teaching them how to play Call of Duty. And I was like, okay, like they could just recharge it themselves. And he said, yeah, but they like the way that he teaches it. So what they do is they, they will just get on there and send him this money because they don't want him to stop making videos. They want him to keep doing it. And y'all, like, I was like, I just stopped for a minute and I was like, how sad is it? that we will throw so much shade at all of these ministry people who are devoting their life to teaching and admonishing and uplifting God through through the word. They will spend hours and hours and hours. And I'm not specifically talking about me. I'm talking about the fact there are, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people that will go out there and try to spread the word of God. But I lost people that were getting on my lives every single day. I lost people that were getting on my lives every single day when I created a Patreon account for a dollar because they got mad because they were like, you're using Christ to get money. And you guys, like, will people will send a million dollars to somebody that's doing Call of Duty as a full time job? Nothing wrong with that if that's what he's if that's what he's supposed to do, whatever. But people will send him a million dollars to talk about a game, and then but people who are spreading the love of God are viewed as corrupt or evil or not not okay if if they create an account to receive a dollar for giving digital uploads. Y'all, we have to check our heart in that. And so when I read that this morning, I was like, this is the perfect time to show, to tell that what God is. And I'm not saying it should be to me. Please don't think that I'm saying that you should donate to me or give to me or nothing. I'm not talking about that. You should, you should pray to God and have him direct you wherever he wants you to send your funding or whatever. That's, that's on you and God. That's not between me and you. That's on you and God. I do this for a hundred percent free because my reward is in heaven for following the calling that he's given me on my life. But it was just very interesting to me that people that had been with me for weeks and should have known my heart was, we got so mad over a dollar. And then, but then this guy who plays Call of Duty is getting millions of dollars to do the exact same thing. And it's not even about your heavenly eternity. It was just weird to me. It was a weird, it was a weird thing. So anyway, I hope y'all received my heart in that and why I was saying that. Just be aware that like, the you're that the world is going to tell you one thing is okay and the other thing that has anything to do with God is not 
basically, is what I'm saying. So, like, we will accept things in our sinful nature to say, oh, yeah, that makes sense. That's his full-time job. We need to give to that. Like, he's doing a good work and showing people how to do this. But the people who go out and surrender their lives to preaching and ministers who go overseas and stuff, we're always hesitant to give to those people. But the people like this who are of the world, it's almost like, oh, well, they're just asking for a dollar. Yeah, sure, whatever. That's nothing cost me more to get a Coke at the groceries, at the gas station. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, just be careful of where your heart is and stuff like that and make sure that God's leading you, but also make sure that you're at, you're actually looking for God to lead you um, and stuff like that. Again, nothing to do with me. Not one thing to do with me. Don't think that it's, I'm asking you to give me money. I am absolutely not. God has fulfilled and taken care of more than what I could ever have desired or needed or anything like that. He has been good. He has been faithful. And I'm like Paul in whatever circumstance I have learned to be in, God has always been enough. He will always be enough. He will always provide. He has always made a way and he always will, period. That I trust in God. That is who I trust in, but it was just an interesting thing, and then we talked about teaching, and so I thought that that would I would bring that up because y'all know what galatians six six says um and if you don't, you need to go read it and it talks about how you should support your teachers because <clears throat> blah blah blah, just go read it if you have questions about that um so it gave me peace anyways. Um, also with who I should donate to, um, as far as people who teach me and mentor me and, um, help me in the gospel, grow in the gospel of Christ. Okay. So first John, what we're talking about verse 26 is the fact that he's saying, but the anointing you have received abides in you and you have no need that anyone should teach you. Well, that doesn't make sense, right? That doesn't make sense, especially in light of everything that we just talked about. So why would John write that, right? Like he's basically teaching right here. Y'all know that he's talked about how God is light and he's counter, <clears throat> he's counteracting the light that comes from, um, the, or people saying that the redemptive light were already in them. The agnostics were saying, um, in a, this big movement that like this, this redemptive light already lived inside of us. And, um, he was saying, no, you don't have anything redemptive in you at all. God is the light. So the whole reason John is writing this to his people is because he's saying like, you don't have anything in you that can redeem you. It is God alone. He is the light. And so he's teaching them. This is teaching, but he's saying you have no need of teaching. So what does he mean? Well, we see through <clears throat> verses 18 through 25. What is John talking about? This is why it's so important, you guys. This this verse is why it's so important to understand and know the scripture and, and to look at the context of the scripture and to look at scripture as a whole because we broke things into um into chapters and verses and different things like that. That was something that man did. It was really just this big long letter or whatever um, per book. Like whoever authored it, it was like a letter. Like Paul wrote letters and that's how we have like his his books and different things like that. And so we put those things in. But we really have to read it kind of like in a how they intended to write it. So we look at the, the place before it and we see what... Out. We use context clues to understand what he's talking about, right? And so from verses 18 until verse 25, John is talking about false teachers. He's talking about the Antichrist. He's talking about the spirit of Antichrist being around them and in them because of false teachers. <clears throat> and he tells it, he says in verse 20, but you have been anointed by the Holy One and you have all knowledge. And so Thank you for that, Shannon. Um, and so what we see is that we went back and we looked at, um, we're looking or we're reading through Psalms and Proverbs and y'all know my memory verse. It's so cool. God's allowed me to use that so many times and I had never read that scripture before Monday, but, um, what it, what that verse says is Proverbs 1 verse 23 says, if you turn at my rebuke, I will pour my spirit out to you and I will make my words known to you. So we're talking about the turning at God's rebuke this morning. Like that, that is what teachers help you do, right? So we have teachers that are given to us and are put in our life so that we can, um, 
know the word of God, right? So that he, we can be led to the word of God. Like if we don't open our mouth, how are people supposed to know? How are, the Bible tells us to go and share, share our testimonies in Matthew verse, Matthew 28 verses 19 through 20. It says, make disciples of all nations. That That is a command. We are supposed to go out and make disciples of all nations. That is the great commission. We're supposed to do that. So teaching is not the problem. Another verse, for you. Ephesians 4 verses 11 through 12. Equip the saints for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body. It says teachers, teaching is a spiritual gift that is anointed by God to be able to go out and lead people to spiritual truth, like truth of who God is. So, I came to know God because somebody taught me. Somebody brought me up in that. Like my my parents taught me. I had print. I had I almost said principles. I had preachers that poured into me. I had um, Sunday school teachers. All of that combined effort of teaching is what led me to Christ. Sure that there was a moment that somebody said something that God watered to spring up into salvation. But y'all, every part of that planting journey is important. And we have to understand that and know that teaching and going out and making disciples is a requirement. It's not a suggestion. That is what we are here to do. And so you may not see the fruit of that. Um, The Bible tells us there's different seasons for that. There's the planter, there's the sower, there's the waterer, and then there is the harvester, the reaper, which is Jesus. He's the one that gets the harvest. He's the one that sees the fruit. He's the one that produces the fruit. He's the one that gets it at the end. And he's the one that has to make it happen, right? And so so you may meet somebody in the seed journey and never see that last part that Jesus finally is like, okay, okay, that it's been watered. It's been planted. Think of a garden, you know, like you put the seed, you till the ground, right? You get the, you get the ground soft. And so there's a process there. And so maybe you have a point part in that. So maybe you're the person that's just softening them up maybe to what God has for them. You're, you're introducing them to the person of God. You're softening their heart towards who God really is and how he loves them and what he's called them to do. And then you have the person who maybe plants the seed. And that is the, that is the truth of scripture. You know, that, that is the truth. The, the seed is the truth. And maybe it gets planted there. Maybe the first seed doesn't take. Maybe it it's like the, the Bible says, like, maybe it's rocky ground still and you got to, that one gets kicked out. And then you come and you put another one in there and you just, you, somebody comes behind you and covers it up. And so that the birds don't take it away. And, and then maybe... Maybe the next you come along and and you're the waterer and you just tell them a little bit more about God and it waters that seed a little bit more that's been planted in them and they, they understand just a little bit more and they get a little bit more hungry for it. And then finally it sprouts up and God is the one that allows it to sprout. God is the one that, that leads it to that point all along because he's the one that anoints us and the people that we have in our life. But he's the one that that is the harvester. He's the one that collects the fruit of the harvest. He is who the harvest is for. And so anyways, um, I need to go back and read all of that scripture because that's so good. It's such a good analogy of like how that, how the gospel gets sprung up inside of us. But, but the, the outside, um, and, and we know that he is the, the purpose and the reason for the harvest because we know that everything that we do as children of God is for his glory alone. It's for our good and for his glory. Y'all know that's my tagline. It's for our good and for his glory alone. It is good for us to produce good fruit, but it's for his glory, not for ours. Not so people look at us and they're like, oh, that tree looks really great. It's really well watered. No, it's for his glory alone. But there has to be people along the way There doesn't have to be. Let me clarify. God can do it without us, but he chooses to use us. And I've told y'all before, like there is somebody waiting for you to be obedient to whatever God's called you to be. He's waiting. There is somebody He has an appointment for you. He's got a divine appointment set out there every single day. He is waiting for you to be obedient to what he's called you to be. You may not see the fruit of that. You may not see anything about that. Your your smile, you guys, and being just a joyous person, 
that shows people something is different about you. Somebody actually that I have no dealings with at the school that I work at. I barely have even seen this person. She started working this year. We saw each other at new teacher orientation. She works in the middle school. So I have literally never seen her again since that time. She came up to me randomly and sought me out. This is not a mark on me. This is all for God's glory, okay? But she came up to me and randomly sought me out yesterday at school and said, I just wanted you to know something. And I said, yes, ma'am. You know, I was like, oh gosh, because I've had some crazy things happen to me this year. But I was like, yes, ma'am. And she said, I just want you to know that like you are one of the happiest people that I've ever seen. She was like, you just, you're just smiling all of the time. She was like, and I wanted to know if you were kin to another person because y'all kind of have like the same mannerism. She was like, and her last name is Holyfield, but she was like, you you just smile. You're just like smiling all the time. Like your joy is so con contagious. And I was like, that's God, you know, like that's such a God thing. Like that's how we should look to people. Like it doesn't matter what we're going through. It doesn't matter the tough seasons. Like that is the, that's the thing. That's it. That's what we should look like. We should look like people who no matter what season we're walking through, we have joy. We are not the negative Nancy. We're the person who goes out and has joy. And part of that is setting ourselves up for people receiving that teaching and that commission when we're able to go and tell them about who God is. Like, if we're just a negative Nancy all the time, and all we do, if anybody's na named Nancy, I'm very sorry. Like, that, I just realized that that was probably rude. But if we're just negative all of the time. If we're just some negative person who is just down and out all of the time and God opens the door for us to tell somebody about Christ, how receptive to that do you think that they're going to be? Because they're going to be like, well, you say that you have all of this joy, but you just walk around complaining all the time or you just walk around with your head down all the time and, and the world is just so bad all the time. Like, no, guys, like how we live our life does matter. And God has called us to go out and make disciples of all nations. That's not just for people he's called to be preachers. Um, so what John is saying here, tying all this back into the scripture we're reading this morning, and the point of what John is saying here is that you have no need that anyone should teach you. And he's talking about the Antichrist, the spirit of Antichrist, because we know that scripture tells us if anything adds or removes from the word, then it is not truth. Like you cannot add um you cannot add a single thing or take away anything from the word. Like the word is truth. And so um, that's what John is saying here. He's saying in verse 24, this is where we get that from. Okay, if you want to know, this is where we get that from. It says, let what you have heard from the beginning abide in you. They heard it from Psalm 1. They heard the message of the gospel from Psalm 1. And so it's not just that John is saying teaching is bad. You shouldn't listen to teachers. There's no room for spiritual teachers. No, he's saying you heard the truth. Okay, you have no other need for someone to come in and tell you anything differently. If I was to reword this in this day, that's how it would be reworded. And I've listened to several sermons on this and several things on this. I've read several commentaries on it, and that's what they all say. It's it's not, we can't say that there's no room for spiritual teachers when God tells us that that, that is a spiritual gift that is anointed and appointed for certain people. I honestly, the closer that I get to God, feel like that is one of the spiritual gifts that he's in, He's given me is to teach. And, and why? Because I find joy in that. And it's a way that I feel unequipped because God gets all of the glory from it. Like I feel unequipped to be able to do that. That's why I know that it's what he's called me to do because he gets the glory from it. Because I have no idea what really comes out of my mouth when I do these things. I just show up prepared and soaked in God's word and God just speaks. Like that is just an attempt. A, a, a testament to who he is and how faithful he is and how good that he is. Um, this is all of God for God for his glory alone. And so 
what John is saying here is that you don't need anybody else to come and teach you who Jesus is. You already know. Like, don't let them change your mind about the gospel. You know the truth. You don't need people like these ant spirit of Antichrist, like the Antichrist, many Antichrists have come, the people that went out that were not of them. You don't have need for those people. You don't have need for those teachings because you know the truth and the truth abides in you. It's about it's it's been abiding in you from the beginning from what you heard and so teachers brought them to the point where they know truth y'all you should fact check every single thing that you read every single thing that you hear every single thing every commentary should be fact checked on the truth of scripture um that is that is just plain and simple same with me if you're on this live every single morning don't take my word for it go read the scripture for yourself like this is just a teachable moment for me to share what god's laid on my heart but you need to go study the scripture you need to go sit with god you need to let god speak to you you don't need to just let me talk to god and you just come on here and just hear what i have to say like god wants to speak to you he wants to spend time with you not with you through me like he wants to be with you alone he loves you that much like he wants to sit with you. He wants to tell you what his plans are. That's how personal our God is. He's like, yes, you need to be sharpened. You have to sit with each other. You have to be sharpened. Like I put you here for community. You were created for community. You were created to feel like you belong with your group of believers. But but I want a personal relationship with you. Jesus died for you. He died for the world, but if it, this is how personal it is, okay? I need you to come close, come close, come close and listen. This is how personal his love is for you. If it was only you, he would have still died on the cross, okay? If it was only you that he would have saved, he would have still died on the cross. That's how personal his love is for you. He wants you, friend, okay? And so, yes, spiritual teaching is great. It has its place, but you have to spend time with God too. And you have to take what people say and fact check it against scripture. If a, if you're listening to a podcast or if you're listening to something that just doesn't really sit right with you and you know you're walking with God, there's a difference between not, not studying the scripture, not praying, not walking with God, not praying that you hear from him and listening to a sermon that is truth and feeling off about it that's conviction and you need to turn from whatever it is that you need to turn from and seek God in whatever that is but if you're if you're if you're walking with God and if you're listening to him it doesn't matter who's teaching if they say something that just doesn't really sit right with you and it doesn't align with scripture then you need to go back and you need to fact check that with scripture you need to search god's word you need to pray for discernment you need to pray that he would open your eyes to that that he would pour his spirit out on you and that he would make his words known to you and, and that's just the truth of it. And we're all human. We're all going to say things that don't, don't, I mean, we're all going to mess up, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like every person is going to mess up. Um, and as you grow in your relationship with Christ, Christ will reveal more things to you and he will unveil your eyes a little bit more to his truth because you can handle it. Um, it's how, it's how I've been personally in my own walk with Christ. Like the more that I get to know him, the more truths about himself he reveals to me. And the more I'm able to hear his voice and understand, hey, that really isn't scriptural. Like that's, that's an, that's an opinion thing. And that's cool. You know, as long as it doesn't disagree with truth, but that's not really like scripture truth based. And so we just, we don't have to argue about that. You know, like you can have your beliefs. I can have mine as long as it doesn't disagree with scripture. And it, as long as it doesn't go against his word and what he's told up, told us is black and white truth, then we can have disagreements. But as far as, but as far as, um, people saying things that are directly against God, there's no room for that teaching in your life, friend. It doesn't matter how motivational it is. It doesn't matter how of a, how much of a hype person that they are. If it goes against God, it has no room in your life. If there's anything about that teaching that is not lining up with Christ, it doesn't have room in your life. The first thing that comes to my mind, and I didn't even think about this until right this minute, is self-help motivational speaking y'all that is 
I like I can't stand it now. I don't want to listen to it. Do you want to know why? Because I have no worth outside of Christ. There is nothing that I can do to make myself worthy of anything. I have no worth outside of what God has delivered me from and into. And so as I walk with my in my relationship with Christ, I have no room for books or or things like that that are not Christian oriented, God centered because I don't, I can't manufacture worth on my life. I cannot make myself better. That has to come from sanctification of Jesus Christ. And so the only thing that I need is to study what it looks like to fully surrender myself to Jesus. And once you do that, everything else will fall into place. Like God will make you better. He will transform you and renew your spirit and your mind. Like that's what that, that's what the Bible tells us. Um, I had a comment yesterday on my, my post that um, just kind of took off, but it was the four ways that the four things that I did that dramatically transformed my life with God. And the very first thing was I stopped looking for myself in scripture. I stopped looking for self-help in scripture. This is not a self-help book. Yes, it does help ourselves, but we have scripture to look for God. Like God gives us this so that we can understand and know more about him and his character and his goodness and his plan for our life and how the story ends. Like it's about him. It's not about us. And we have to realize that. And so as far as teachings and those motivational talks and all that kind of stuff, just be very careful with that because you can hype yourself up. You can hype yourself up to be like, yeah, I can do this. I can, I can do whatever it takes. Like I got this. I've got, I'm, I'm going to pick up my bootstraps type of person. We're, we're getting after it. That is not what the Bible tells us. The Bible tells us that everything that we do, we should work for the glory of God. Everything that we do should be in surrender to others. Everything that we do should be in humility. And that humility doesn't mean that we think of ourselves less. It means that it doesn't mean that we think less of ourselves. It means that we think of ourselves less. And so, how can we do that? If we're getting hyped up and all this motivational stuff, like you're good, you're good, you're good, you're a great person, you're you're going to go out and you're going to do great things and you're going to climb that corporate ladder and you're going to blah, blah, blah. That's why this whole platform is called a holy hustle because I realized that that stuff wasn't glorifying to God. That was putting me on a pedestal that he deserved to be on. He's the only one that deserves that place in my life. He's the only one that deserves that glory. We have to understand that if we truly want to realize who he is and grow in our relationship with him. That is not a popular thing these days. Like we all want to think that we're good enough and we're not. The Bible tells us there's none good no not one and one sin one sin doesn't matter what it is one sin separates us from the love of God we all need Jesus period he's the only one that deserves the glory from it so um and it's his anointing that gives us that his his anointing is what pours his spirit out on us Proverbs 1 verse 23 when we turn and realize that we're not good and he is the only thing that's good, his anointing over us of the, of the Holy One, of the Holy Spirit, is the one that pours out his spirit on us and makes his words known to us. He's the one that does that. That's why he deserves the glory for it. For it. <clears throat> um, And then I know that I'm about to hop off. So I'm going to give y'all some scripture that I want y'all to go read, like in light of this. Um. But this is why it's so important to know context, right? Uh, Romans 12, verses 6 and 7. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 28. Colossians 3, 16. And Ephesians 4, verses 11 through 16. And then what we talked about supporting your teachers, Galatians 6 is the chapter that you need to read on, on that. But... I just like, I have spiritual people like that I listen to. I have teachers that I prefer their teaching style on. And I have people that I listen to, to help me in my walk with Christ. Um, Christine Kane is one of the podcasts that I listen to. She's great. Um, I like Lisa Harper. Um, she's wonderful in person, especially. She was fantastic. Um, I'll listen to Jenny Allen stuff every now and then. I have people that I go and listen to their teaching. I, I like people call me a Calvinist. I'm not a Calvinist. I don't, I don't, I don't, um, 
claim any any group of people. I claim Jesus. That's what I claim. And I claim whatever his word teaches me through scripture, period. Like that's what I, that is what I measure my life up to, not a group of people. Okay. So, um, that's not in the Bible. So I'm not going to claim myself as, as that. So I'm not going to claim myself as anything. Like I'm, I just follow Jesus period. But I like John Piper's ask pastor John stuff. Sometimes he breaks down scriptures and he puts in perspective, like different things in scriptures, as far as I could be anything like sexual immorality. Like he does all of that kind of stuff. It's called ask pastor John. Um, I listen to those things and those are teachings. And I know that those people have spiritual gifts. They've spoken into me in my life. They don't even know who I am, and they've done that. And so teaching is not bad. Bad teaching is bad. And in this day and time, what I would tell you is the motivational hype stuff, because that's what I imagine John is trying to combat right now, because these agnostics and these spirit of the Antichrist people um were teaching that the redemptive light was already inside of you. And so you just had to channel that. Like you just had to channel the redemptive the redemptive light that was already inside of you. That is motivational. That's you're your own hype person. Like you can do this. You can do this. Like you've already got it in you. You just need to pull it out. And that's not gospel. The gospel tells us that we are corrupt, that we are evil, that there is no good within us, that we are not good, that we are headed straight for eternity in hell until we have Jesus. And so that is it's just not scriptural to think that there's anything good within us. Um, and what I was going to say is, and this is like the last thing, but somebody commented on my post yesterday and was like, uh, not yesterday, maybe it was a couple of days ago <clears throat> when I was talking about being careful about the, the company that you keep and the people that you let into your mess. And somebody commented and said, um, uh, I have good people that don't believe in Christ around me. There are good people, good moral upstanding people who don't believe in Christ. And that's not even possible. Just because they don't do things that we consider to be corrupt, they're not good people. The Bible directly tells us that there is none good. No, not one. There is not a good person on this planet. They may not do anything that's stealing, killing, murdering. They may not do any of the big ticket things that we consider to make people corrupt, but at their core, they are corrupt. Every one of us are. Like Until we have the blood of Jesus that covers our life and the Holy Spirit inside of us, we are all corrupt. We are all horrible. We are all sinners that need a savior. And so we can't, we can't say like, oh, well, they're just a quote unquote good person. And we use that as in like a, a like morally they're upstanding or they were brought up right or whatever. They don't steal from people, you know, they, they mind their own, whatever, but at their core, at their core, they are not a good person. And so that was, that was what I was telling y'all in that last video. At people's core, they are always going to be sinful this side of eternity. And we have to measure people's fruit by what God says measure their fruit by to know if they're truly wise counsel or somebody that we can trust to teach us and lead us in our life. Like we have to measure people. We have to judge people based on their fruit to be able to know if they should be our wise counsel, if they should be teachers, if they should be leading us to Christ. And so that is not, that is not, um, that is scripture. So we have to measure everything up against scripture. And that is scripture. That is scripture. We're not good. We're not good people. Um, let's see. Um, like this is an insane take <clears throat> versus again, for who missed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that putting that in. Okay, I'll wait a minute so people can write that down before we pray and, and get off. I really, for my moderators, I really, like, I appreciate y'all so much. Y'all just literally have no idea. Thank you, Yvonne. I appreciate that. Have you ever listened to Beth Moore? I'm not a big fan of Beth Moore. Um, 
I'm not a fan of Beth Moore. I know, right? I know. If you screenshot it, you probably got a, a great, wonderful picture of my face. <laughs> oh, no glitching. Yay for internet. Agnostic is the people that, um, Jesus, that John is actually combating against. And if you want to know, <clears throat> I never listened to, um, Stephen Darby. Um, just fact check everything against scripture. Just fact check everything against scripture and you'll be fine. Even me, like literally everything that I say you should fact check with scripture. Everything. Every Don't ever take my advice as solid. You should always look for yourself in scripture. God will reveal it to you. He'll make that known. And if a teacher tells, if, if you ever are listening to a person teach you in the gospel that does not tell you to fact check them in scripture, you need to not listen to them <laughs> because that is... You should have a relationship with Jesus first, period. That's above all things. Like, that. that's the most important part. And so, if you ever have a teacher that says, I'm not willing, that, like, you don't have to fact check me. This is actual truth, and you can take my word at it. No, no, no. You need to run, and you need to go, you know, don't, don't go there. <clears throat> How do you know where in the Bible to look that you're convicted about? Google it. That's what I do. If I ever think about something, we have like, we have the most amazing opportunity at this point in our life. And I'm hanging on a little bit more because I'm drinking my pre-workout. I got to go get on the bike. But if we, we have this amazing opportunity to live in 2023 where all we can go, we can go to Google and we can say like, hey, Google, what are some Bible verses on healthy eating? And it will spit out a whole list of them for you. Like it's. We have no excuse. Like, they didn't have excuse then, but we, I can't imagine standing before Jesus and saying, oh, I didn't know that was a sin. He's going to be like, are you serious? Like, I gave you every tool. Like, you had everything. You had instant Bible verses at your fingertips. <clears throat> can we pray before I go? Yes, we can pray. Um, Dear God, wow, I just come to you this morning and... Uh, I just pray, first of all, that everything that was said, especially about teachers and supporting teachers, God, I just pray that that was received from a spirit of love and truth of what your word says, God. And I pray that you just speak to us and you get all of the glory for everything that happens here, that you you humble us down, humble me down to be able to understand that. I'm not equipped for this without you. You are the equipper. You're the one that does the equipping, God. And I pray that into anybody else who's struggling with where they are in their life right now, God, that that if they feel unequipped, it's because you're equipping, God. You, you are the person that allows us to go into the world and tell people about you. You're the one that gives us words to speak. Your word tells us that. Like, I, you, you say, I will give you the words to speak. I will show you what you need to say, God. And so I pray that we would be so hungry for your word that it would replace our phones, it would replace our TV, it would replace anything else in our life that is distracting from you, that we would be so hungry for who you are, that we would just crave you and want you more so that we can hear your voice and understand the path that you want us to walk for your glory, God. I just ask that as we meet here, that you are fully glorified in everything that is said and done and you get all the praise the glory and the honor uh, we love you so much thank you for sending jesus thank you for saving our soul god be with us today as we go and and tell people about you and who you are in jesus name amen i love y'all hold on a work in progress <clears throat> i missed that all right i love you guys I hope y'all have the best day ever. Um, it's going to be a good one. And today's Friday, so we'll meet again on Monday. And for those of you who are in the our Holy Hustle community, um, we are going. I'm going to post a poll on when we could do the Roman study. So that is coming. 
probably we're going to launch that in October. I just have to get my mind around when we're going to do that. So what I'm thinking you guys right now is going to be if this is a time where y'all are good with it, um Saturday mornings, not quite so early, but potentially Saturday mornings um to be able to do the Roman study. Um, and then for those of you who missed maybe part of this and want to look back, it will be on YouTube this afternoon. I usually post on YouTube. It takes TikTok about, I don't know, it takes TikTok a while, like half a day to be able to make this into downloadable. And then I, I download it when I get back home from my teaching job. So anyways, I'm working on the football game tonight at school, so it'll be super late, but I'll, I will download it and upload it to YouTube. So um, if you've missed First John chapter 2, I've got three, I think, studies uploaded on there, or two and a half, because one was still when I had bad internet. Thank you for being here. Okay, so I love you guys, and I hope y'all have a great day, and I will um, see y'all on Monday morning at 5 a.m. Central Standard Time. So we're going to be going through First John chapter 3. I hope y'all have a great day. Bye, you guys. If I can get this to turn off, that is.